The modern world hums with digital information. Smartphones connect us, computers process vast data, and cars drive themselves. Underlying this technological marvel is a tiny component, often smaller than a grain of sand, the transistor. These microscopic switches control the flow of electricity, forming the fundamental building blocks of integrated circuits, or chips, that power our digital lives. Transistors act as gatekeepers, allowing or blocking the passage of electrical current. By combining millions, even billions of these transistors on a single chip, engineers create intricate circuits that perform complex calculations, store information, and control electronic devices. The sheer scale of transistor integration is mind-boggling, with modern chips packing more transistors than there are stars in the Milky Way. The journey of a transistor from raw materials to a functioning component within a sophisticated device is a testament to human ingenuity and precision engineering. It involves a complex choreography of physics, chemistry, and engineering, each step demanding meticulous control and unwavering accuracy. This intricate process, often hidden from view, is the foundation upon which our digital world is built. From the silicon mines to the clean rooms of semiconductor fabrication plants, the creation of transistors is a high-tech odyssey, a testament to our relentless pursuit of miniaturization and computational power. The story of transistor manufacturing is a story of human innovation, a testament to our capacity to manipulate matter at the atomic level to create technologies that reshape our world. The journey begins with ordinary sand, an abundant source of silicon dioxide. This raw material undergoes a series of chemical reactions to extract pure silicon, the semiconductor material at the heart of transistors. The process starts with heating the sand to high temperatures, converting it to metallurgical grade silicon. This initial silicon is still impure, containing other elements. Further purification is achieved through a process called the Siemens process. In this method, the silicon is reacted with hydrogen chloride gas to form trichlorosilane, a volatile liquid. The impurities remain in the solid residue, effectively separating them from the silicon. The purified trichlorosilane is then reduced back to silicon using hydrogen gas in a reactor. This process deposits ultra-pure silicon onto thin rods, forming polycrystalline silicon. This highly purified silicon with impurities measured in parts per billion forms the foundation for transistor fabrication. The purified silicon is then melted and grown into large cylindrical single crystals using the Chakralsky process. This process involves dipping a seed crystal into molten silicon and slowly pulling it upwards, allowing the molten silicon to solidify around the seed, forming a single continuous crystal structure. These crystals, known as ingots, are the starting point for creating silicon wafers, the canvases upon which transistors are built. The silicon ingots, shimmering with metallic purity, are sliced into thin, circular wafers. These wafers, typically just a few hundred micrometers thick, form the foundation for building integrated circuits. The wafers are meticulously polished to achieve a mirror-smooth surface essential for the precise fabrication processes that follow. The polished wafers undergo a cleaning process to remove any remaining contaminants. This involves a series of chemical baths and rinses, ensuring that the wafer surface is pristine and free of any particles that could interfere with the subsequent fabrication steps. The wafers are then coated with a thin layer of silicon dioxide, an insulating layer that acts as a barrier between the silicon substrate and the circuits built upon it. This oxide layer provides electrical isolation, preventing unwanted current leakage between different parts of the circuit. It also serves as a mask during subsequent processing steps, protecting specific areas of the silicon wafer from modification. The wafer is now ready for the intricate process of building transistors, a process that involves a series of carefully orchestrated steps, each adding another layer of complexity to the final device. The clean, polished silicon wafer coated with a protective oxide layer is a blank canvas awaiting the intricate patterns that will define the functionality of the final integrated circuit. Photolithography is the art of using light to transfer intricate patterns onto the silicon wafer. It's akin to photography, but instead of capturing an image, it creates a blueprint for the transistor structure. 
The process begins with coating the wafer with a light-sensitive material called photoresist. A photo mask, a glass plate containing the desired circuit pattern, is placed over the wafer. Ultraviolet light is then shown through the mask, exposing the photoresist in the areas where the mask allows light to pass. The exposed photoresist undergoes a chemical change, becoming soluble in a developer solution. The wafer is then immersed in the developer, which removes the exposed photoresist, leaving behind the desired pattern on the wafer surface. The unexposed photoresist remains acting as a protective mask for the underlying silicon dioxide layer. This process, repeated multiple times with different masks, creates the intricate layers of the transistor structure. Photolithography is a high-precision process requiring meticulous control over the alignment of the mask, the intensity of the light, and the development time. The smallest features on modern chips are measured in nanometers, requiring extreme ultraviolet light sources and sophisticated optics to achieve the necessary resolution. Section 5 Etching Sculpting the Silicon Etching is the process of selectively removing material from the silicon wafer, sculpting the transistor structure according to the pattern defined by photolithography. There are two main types of etching, wet etching, which uses chemical solutions, and dry etching, which uses reactive gases. Wet etching involves immersing the wafer in a chemical solution that dissolves the exposed silicon dioxide or silicon. The unexposed areas protected by the photoresist remain intact. This method is relatively simple, but it can be difficult to control precisely, leading to less sharp features. Dry etching, also known as plasma etching, uses reactive gases in a vacuum chamber to remove material. The gas is ionized into a plasma, a highly reactive state, which bombards the wafer surface. The plasma reacts with the exposed material, etching it away. Dry etching offers greater precision and control, allowing for the creation of smaller features with sharper edges. The etching process, repeated multiple times with different masks and etching methods, creates the three-dimensional structure of the transistor, defining its channels, gates, and source drain regions. This meticulous sculpting of the silicon wafer is crucial for creating the desired electrical properties of the transistor. Section 6. Doping, adding impurities for functionality. Doping is the process of introducing impurities into the silicon crystal lattice to alter its electrical conductivity. Silicon in its pure form is a poor conductor of electricity. By adding specific impurities, engineers can create regions within the silicon that have either an excess of electrons, N-type, or a deficiency of electrons, P-type. N-type doping is achieved by introducing elements like phosphorus or arsenic, which have one more valence electron than silicon. These extra electrons are free to move within the silicon lattice, increasing its conductivity. P-type doping, on the other hand, involves introducing elements like boron or gallium, which have one less valence electron than silicon. This creates holes, effectively positive charges, which can also move through the lattice, contributing to conductivity. The doping process is carefully controlled to create specific regions of N-type and P-type silicon within the transistor structure. These regions form the junctions that control the flow of current through the transistor. The precise placement and concentration of dopants are crucial for determining the electrical characteristics of the transistor. Doping transforms the silicon wafer from a simple semiconductor into a complex network of interacting regions, each with its own electrical properties. This controlled introduction of impurities is the key to creating the functionality of the transistor, enabling it to act as a switch, an amplifier, or a logic gate. Layering up building the transistor. The transistor structure is built up layer by layer using a combination of deposition and etching processes. Each layer adds a new element to the transistor, creating the intricate network of connections that define its functionality. The deposition processes involve adding thin films of various materials onto the wafer surface. One common deposition method is chemical vapor deposition, or CVD where gases containing the desired material are introduced into a chamber containing the wafer. The gases react at the wafer surface, depositing a thin film of the material. 
Another method is physical vapor deposition, or PVD, where the material is vaporized and then deposited onto the wafer surface. These deposition processes are used to create the various layers of the transistor, including the gate oxide, the gate electrode, and the source drain contacts. The gate oxide is a thin insulating layer that separates the gate electrode from the silicon channel. The gate electrode, typically made of polysilicon or metal, controls the flow of current through the channel. The source and drain contacts are regions of heavily doped silicon that provide electrical connections to the transistor. These layers are carefully patterned and etched to create the desired transistor geometry. The layering process is a meticulous ballet of deposition and etching, building up the intricate structure of the transistor layer by layer until the final device emerges. Testing and packaging, ensuring quality and protection. Once the transistors are fabricated on the wafer, they undergo rigorous testing to ensure their functionality and performance. This involves applying electrical signals to the transistors and measuring their response, verifying that they operate within the specified parameters. Defective transistors are identified and marked, ensuring that only functional devices are packaged. The wafer is then diced into individual chips, each containing millions or even billions of transistors. These chips are carefully inspected for any physical defects that may have occurred during fabrication or dicing. Only flawless chips are selected for packaging. Packaging protects the delicate chip from physical damage and environmental factors. The chip is mounted onto a substrate, typically made of ceramic or plastic, which provides mechanical support and electrical connections. The substrate also serves as a heat sink, dissipating the heat generated by the chip during operation. Fine wires, often thinner than a human hair, are used to connect the chip to the substrate, creating electrical pathways for input and output signals. The packaged chip is then encapsulated in a protective casing, typically made of plastic or ceramic. This casing shields the chip from moisture, dust, and other environmental factors that could damage it. The packaging process is the final step in the long journey of transistor manufacturing, transforming the delicate silicon chip into a robust, functional component ready for integration into electronic devices. Transistors, the unsung heroes of the digital age. Transistors, these microscopic marvels of engineering, are the fundamental building blocks of integrated circuits, the brains of our computers, smartphones, and countless other electronic devices. Their ability to control the flow of electricity with incredible precision has revolutionized the way we live, work, and communicate. From the humble beginnings of the first point contact transistor in 1947, Transistor technology has advanced at an astonishing pace. Moore's law, the observation that the number of transistors on a chip doubles approximately every two years, has held true for decades, driving exponential growth in computing power and miniaturization. This relentless pursuit of smaller, faster, and more efficient transistors has led to the creation of devices that were once the stuff of science fiction. Smartphones now pack more computing power than the room-sized computers of the 1960s. Medical devices monitor our health with unprecedented accuracy. Cars drive themselves, guided by complex algorithms processed by billions of transistors. The impact of transistors on society is profound and pervasive. They have transformed communication, entertainment, healthcare, transportation, and countless other aspects of our lives. The digital world as we know it would not exist without these tiny titans of technology quietly orchestrating the flow of information that shapes our modern existence. The future of transistors, smaller, faster, more powerful. The quest for ever smaller, faster, and more powerful transistors continues unabated. As we approach the physical limits of silicon-based technology, researchers are exploring new materials and architectures to push the boundaries of transistor performance. One promising avenue is the development of transistors using materials like graphene or carbon nanotubes. These materials exhibit remarkable electrical properties, offering the potential for faster switching speeds and lower power consumption. Another area of exploration is the development of three-dimensional transistor architectures, which stack multiple layers of transistors on top of each other, increasing transistor density and reducing the distance signals need to travel. 
Quantum computing, a revolutionary approach to computation that harnesses the principles of quantum mechanics, also relies on transistors, albeit of a very different kind. These quantum transistors, known as qubits, can exist in a superposition of states, enabling them to perform calculations that are impossible for classical transistors. The future of transistors holds immense promise for continued technological advancement. As researchers push the boundaries of material science, nanotechnology, and quantum computing, transistors will continue to shrink, accelerate, and empower new generations of electronic devices, shaping the future of our digital world in ways we can only begin to imagine.